For almost a year and a half, I've been working on building a high-tech 3D printed guitar, and right now I am testing the limits of my skills as I'm trying to make all of these electronics actually work. Hello, my name is Chad, at Metalhead Maker on most socials, except Instagram. Now I got a bunch of other videos on my channel covering this entire guitar build, but the TLDR is this guitar that I'm building is fully 3D printed, not just the body, the neck as well, and the fretboard. Now I had someone in one of my videos point out that it's not technically fully 3D printed because I guess the metal wasn't 3D printed and the electronics weren't 3D printed. Is that where we're at right now? Fine, it's mostly 3D printed, but it's also covered in RGB LEDs. In theory, it's gonna be able to tune itself. It's got the foundation for signal processing and it's got expansion ports, hopefully for something like MIDI. Now, I spent a lot of time designing building the main board or the motherboard for this guitar. And the side panel has a control board on it and I thought I should probably just manually solder that onto a prototyping board, but that turned into this mess right here. And you can only cut and splice this kind of stuff so much before it becomes like super brittle and unpredictable. So I just bit the bullet and I did some redesign on the main board PCB and had it reprinted as well as a control board so I don't have that big mess of wires on the control panel. I briefly showed how I designed my PCBs in a previous video, but basically I use a free online tool called Easy EDA. Once I was ready to get my PCBs manufactured, that's where the sponsor of this video comes in, JLC. Once I tweaked a few things, I simply uploaded the design files that I got from Easy EDA to the JLC PCB site and got an instant quote. So after picking all of my options, I just checked out and a few days later, the board showed up at my door. The quality was killer as always, sharp traces, clean silk screen, everything exactly how I designed it. And here's the thing, JLC PCB, I cannot wait to use their other services because they don't just do PCB stuff anymore. You can now get metal and resin 3D printing, CNC machining, and even custom mechatronic solutions from the same place. And I know I sound like I'm raving because it's an ad, but you guys gotta check this stuff out. There are some amazing things that they can do. So if you're working on your projects and you want a pro level of manufacturing without dropping a ton of cash, JLC is honestly hard to beat. Links in the description. Thank you so much to JLC for sponsoring this video. Now back to the build. In part six, I swapped out the Teensy for a Raspberry Pi Pico with a little conversion board that I built. I was working through some bugs that kept frying microcontrollers. It's a lot easier to tolerate a dead $6 MCU versus a $40 one. That said, I hit the limit of what the Pico can do really quickly since it has a lot less pins. I've done all the testing that I could do with the Raspberry Pi Pico, so. I need to actually plug in the Teensy finally and see if I can get this thing to work without blowing it up. This is Teensy number four, wish me luck. Oh, please work, please work, please work. Here we go. Ah, look at that. Now maybe I can actually make some progress. So before I started to assemble that new control panel PCB, I wanted to make sure that all the buttons and the encoder and the screen worked how I wanted. And that came with some problems. The screen I have here is an upgrade from the previous screen that I was working with. So I had to do a little bit of rerouting. That means actually physically cutting the traces using a knife. And that creates a bit of a mess on its own. But then I had to also reroute power. Originally, I was pushing five volts on purpose from the main board's power rail to the control panel because technically those are five volt components that can run at 3.3 volts. That is a problem because the microcontroller that I use the Teensy 4.1 is only 3.3 volt tolerant, which means that I would send five volts out to the control panel and everything would work fine. But as soon as I hit a button or sent some kind of signal back to the Teensy to tell it to do something. <laughs> so to prevent another dead microcontroller, I rewired it to 3.3 volts. The controls work just fine. The screen, it took me about two days to get it to work. And even then it was a little iffy. My only theory is that the traces that I cut and rerouted were not completely cut. I could isolate the screen on a breadboard and it would work just fine. But when I plugged it into the main board on the guitar, it made up its own work schedule. I was just done with it. I decided to just say, screw it. I'm just gonna move to the new board. And that, that right there is why you're just now getting a new video. I wasn't planning on building up that new main board until like the end of the project. I was not looking forward to this, so I procrastinated by knocking out the new control panel PCB first. And this went okay, aside from a small bug that I found on all three buttons, so I had to do a splice for each one of them. By the way, I do live streams occasionally where I actually build some of this stuff, and in this case, I did build the, the control panel PCB 
on live stream. So if you want to go check that out, you can just go over to my channel and watch almost that entire assembly process. Okay, there's just no getting around it. I got to get this main board done. There are a lot of pads here and I have manually soldered this entire board once before. I don't want to do that again. Thankfully, I have a stencil for this PCB, which has all the holes for the pads cut out in the right spot, and it's made out of metal. You just stick it right over top of the PCB, and as long as you're really careful, you can drag over some solder paste, and bam. Look how clean that is. To back up a little bit, though, that doesn't make it any easier to source and organize all the parts to put on this board. So I had to spend about a day digging through all of my parts and putting together everything on a big piece of tape, which helps me keep track of all those little teeny tiny pieces. So once I applied that solder using the stencil, I can now just pick and place all of those little parts super quick. The one problem that I did run into was that I have a heat plate is not big enough for the PCB. I was able to make it work by just doing half at a time, but I'm telling you, I'm a child when it comes to this stuff. I could watch solder reflow all day. You know, this is an area where I could spend a ton of time talking about all the intricacies of the components and the process but I've got a live stream on this uh, particular build as well. So if you want to really dive a little deeper into this, you can go watch that live stream on my channel. But if you do come back here right after that, because we're not done yet. Killing my own retention time. At this point, I did everything that I could think of to test and make sure that the board was stable and at least pushing power in the way that it should. So when I connected the TNC to the board, it didn't fry it again. But there was one thing that I didn't anticipate. So if you look at this board here, this is just an example board, you'll see that there is this little part where I had to break it off because you basically have this big long strip and you just cut it where you need it when you're using these headers. So I ended up putting it on like this. You'll see we're misaligned. Can't be that big of a deal, right? Yes, it is. It's a very big deal. <laughs> I have enough dead teensies at this moment to start my own teeny tiny teeth to start my own teeny tiny teensy graveyard. <laughs> you laugh or you cry. <laughs> and I've already done both. Okay, um, it didn't completely fry it, I should say. Some pins worked, some pins didn't. You know what, actually, I've got it right here. I'm going to plug it in and I wanna, just wanna see if... Nope, it's cooked. That's all right. I got another one, so moving on. Other than that unforced error, everything's kind of working for the most part. There is one issue with power. The PD chip or the power delivery chip, depending on how you wire it, you can have it pump out you know, 12 volts or nine volts or maybe 20 volts from a predefined list of options. For some reason, I can't nail down the combination to get 12 volts, so whatever. I'll figure that one out eventually. But in the meantime, I can just make sure that the battery is charged and run it off of the battery, not worrying about the fact that I can't necessarily charge it from the USB PD or the USB C. Okay, so with all of that in mind, I wanted to test everything or as much as I could to make sure that most of the stuff on the board was working. So I wrote a script that will test a good majority of the functions on the board. Granted, this is about when the microcontroller was starting to die, but you can still see a lot of the features that are built into the board. Okay, so same test. We hope that this thing spins, these turn on, this guy spins here. I'm not even gonna bother with the relay right now. Okay, so this should spin, and it does. Good. Oh, we got some lights. Good, the lights are working. And that should work, okay. It's running through the tests and telling me what's going on here. And that's just a little program that I wrote that tests all the components. And yes, that was a little anticlimactic because I took it from the live stream. So here's a little sneak peek of the entire guitar lighting up. The deeper I get into this guitar build, the more I'm realizing how complicated it is to balance the engineering side with the aesthetic side. I'm probably going to do a reveal on that next video where we've got it all together. It's just the finishes are gonna be rough on it, and I'm guessing that 98% of the people that see the video will probably not mind that, but you're gonna have those 2% people that, the purists that just look at that and say, that looks so bad. Anyway, if you're digging this project so far, hit that like button, and if you have any questions or you just wanna shoot the breeze, hit me up in the comments below. I will be back with that reveal video very soon. So bad.